Welcome to Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis. I hope, I hope you are all as happy as I am. Uh, I am happy to see that the things turned out pretty much what we said would likely happen even though many doubted it, right? Anyhow, welcome aboard Bridge MCP. Welcome aboard Dildert Doe. Welcome aboard AVQ. Welcome aboard uh, Michael Rodney, Yvette Avery Herod. How are you doing today? As well as Melanie Keelin. Wow. We did it. Robert J. Travino. Robert J. Travino. How, Travino, how are you doing? Who else is in the house? If you are in the house and you haven't told me, because I know you're here, just make yourself known and we'll give you a salute. All right, folks, let's get busy. Egberto, one for the screen. Let's see what we got here. If it's one that I can put on the screen, let's see. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Rudnan, Rudnan, Rudnan. You want to make some fun. There we go, folks. Everyone gets a puppy, 50.01. And you know what? Forever, 49. <laughs> as, Can as a Canadian, this is how it feels watching American election these days. That is funny. I must say, that is funny, Senor Rodney. That is funny. Okay, Berto, the election of 2022 results aren't likely to be mostly tabulated until Friday or Monday. Preliminary results indicate a dead heat, no red wave, as conservatives hoped. But insufficient backlash against the threat of losing democracy to election deniers, losing women's rights to regressives, and losing civilization to accelerating global warming. I don't think anyone who's following politics as a team sport is having a good day today. I am having a good day today. Let me explain, Rudnan, and I know exactly what you're saying. You are saying that the urgency that should have been shown for all the rights that's been taken away from women, from the rights that, that from the possibility of losing our democracy for all the ills in, inflicted on us by the Republicans, that we should have been rushing to the polls. And, and, and it should have been a route, not by the, the, the Republican side, but by the other side. To which I say, brother, let's temper a bit. Um, I'm going to tell you, you know, I, 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 I know exactly what you're saying. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I want you to listen to it this way. If nearly half of your population has been indoctrinated by a lot of the concepts of the right that are non-functional, that are evil, that are, but because it, of where it comes from, it's normal, it's normalized. You don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. In fact, we make a caricature out of others. They are converted. It's going to take some time to reach them appropriately. And then you have another group that sees the light, but so often just says, throw their hands up in the air and never does anything. Well, you know what happened yesterday? They came out. Yes, there's a large percentage of the population that is misguided. Even here in Harris County, our judge won, but she didn't win by the landslide she should have won by because it, many, including many Democrats, bought into the crime lie that's been placed on TV. It takes so much to overcome the forces that pay for evil. It takes so much energy, effort, work, etc. So if you listen to my show at noon, the KPFT show, that's how I ended the show. We have to be engaged and we have to be the ones working with our brothers and sisters around the country, irrespective of ideology, because again, what you saw yesterday, for those who don't feel good because they thought there should have been a lot more impetus from those who wanted to save our democracy, those who wanted to save women's rights, those who wanted to do all those things. You're right. You're correct. But when you have minds that have been placed or are changed until we do the work to earn their faith, to earn their trust and respect so that they'll start listening to reason, we got to love what happened yesterday. Even if we lose the Senate and the House, I don't think we're losing the Senate. It would be by such marginal rates that it, 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 is, it, it would be them holding, having a two-year placeholder. Anyhow, 
Michael also says, The Telegraph UK, Donald Trump is the biggest loser of 2022 midterms. The former president backed a slew of losing candidates, while Ron DeSantis, his main uh, rival, trounced the field. The new Republic, uh, Trump, is having a meltdown after so many of his candidates lost the election. The former president is reportedly screaming at everybody as the election results come in. Fox News, Trump blasted across a spectrum over Republicans' midterms performance. Biggest loser tonight. Yes, even Fox T- GOP TV sees the writing on the wall. While all of the results aren't in yet of the preliminary results that have been called so over half of Trump endorsed candidates lost their races, indicating that you can't win a Republican primary without Trump, but you can't win a general election with him. Follow ups forthcoming. Egberto, I don't know if you're able, but mind playing the 10 second Twitter clip for me. Well, they, if they win, I should get it all credit. If they, I saw that, but uh, maybe I can play it. Maybe I can play it for you. Because I, this is y'all's show. So if you ask me to play it, I got to play it. Let me, let me see if I can get it out there. But yeah, I saw the clip on, was it on MSNBC, I believe? Let's go ahead and try to play it. Forgive me if it doesn't work out right. Let me make sure that I, I have, I, I want to make sure I have the right thing set up because sometimes I get into trouble with the audio. I think the audio may be correct. Let's see if it'll play. I'll, I'll try to play it and we'll see. Here we go and see if it'll play for you. But it, it, that was a good one. Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. OK, but it'll probably be just the opposite. Uh, well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. OK, but it'll probably be just the opposite. I mean, the narcissist in this guy. Thanks for the clip. Uh, thanks for the clip. Thanks for the clip. The narcissist in this guy. If I win, we take the credit. If I lose, who cares? Anyhow, Bridge MCP says, hi, peeps. Yvette Avery Herod says, hello, Posse. Or uh, B- PDR, afternoon, PDR Posse. Melanie Keelan says she's here. Good evening to everybody. Bridge MCP said, Russia says it's withdrawing from the key city of Kherson, but Ukraine is skeptical. Updated November 9, 22, Russia announced a trip withdrawal from the key Ukrainian city of Kherson on Wednesday in what would be a major blow to President Vladimir Putin's war effort. But the government in Kiev was skeptical of the move. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Sorgov said Wednesday he ordered troops to retreat from Kherson to the eastern bank of the Dnipro River or recommenda- on recommendations of commander of Russia's forces in Ukraine. Yep, probably crooked stuff. New York approved three ballot measures to codify racial justice in the city charter. As I reported earlier this week, the Racial Justice Commission and and proposed ballot measures were a response to the racial reckoning in the uh, summer of 2020 over police brutality and to a pandemic that disproportionately impacted black and brown New Yorkers. The first proposal to add preamble to the city charters, the second to create a racial equity office passed with 70% of the vote. The third measure aimed to accurately measure the cost of living of New Yorkers was approved by over 80% of the voters, notably by the only measure the right-leaning Staten Island pushed through. The trio's success has led generally by Brooklyn voters. All right. What else we got here? Oh, didn't hear that. All right. Continuing. Tom C. says, as we say in Michigan, go blue. And we did. Hey, let me tell you guys about Michigan, man. Tom C. has bragging rights. Michigan took over the Michigan Senate, the Michigan House, the governorship, the secretary of state. Michigan took it all. It's all blue. Not only the governorship, but even the two houses. So from super majority in in Michigan of, of the Reds to the blue taking over, Tom C., you guys ought to be like super proud. Bridge MCP says no red wave. Ha. But Georgia, dear Lord, I get it, girl. I get it. Lee Grant says, hey, all, no red wave, but red splash. Abbott crushed Beto. Yes, he did. But you know what Beto did? Beto brought in so many voters that the three house districts that were supposed to go Latino red, one of them went Latino kind of pinkish, but we kept all the rest. So, nope. And we're winning, we're winning, winning seats in Ohio and all these other places. Yeah, we're losing a few. But it may turn out yet that Democrats hold the House. We don't know. It just could happen, though. Let's see. It, it depends on California. 
But I tell you, Colorado, we just about won them all. Uh, I mean, it, it, could, it could happen, but we'll see. Eric Hayes says, sure, you are. Egberto Control is not the best thing. And hopefully, this is wake-up call Dems that a lot of people are in the middle. This is a wake-up call for Democrats. But what it says is you really start showing people what you're going to do for them. And you don't allow the other side to lie. And by the way, Eric... If you notice, just about everything that I spoke about and prognosticated on the program came to pass. I said that the, the state of Harris County will bring uh, Elena, uh, <laughs> Alina Hidalgo out. I said that. It happened, right? So, um, And the reason why is, is you have to know your people. You have, to know your, you have to know the people that you represent. You know? And? Hidalgo did it. Hidalgo did it. Uh, anyhow, let me let me let me check one thing here. I just said Elena Hidalgo. I don't know why I, I, I said it that way. It's Lina Hidalgo. ¿Qué me pasa, hombre? ¿Qué me pasa? Okay. So Eric, so yep, we won pretty much. Uh, Tom C says to Stacy and Beto, don't give up. Tomorrow's another day. Your day will come. They did important work. They engaged people. And yes, he didn't win. Uh, he didn't win against the... I mean, when you have Abbott, the, the, the kind of lies that Abbott is capable of saying and the pushback that is lacking on the Democratic side, you can expect that to happen. And until we get a little bit tougher in the spine and comes back, come back harder, this will continue to happen. The fact that people voted for MTG kills me. I know, but guess who got beat? Bobart seems to be losing. Bobart, the, 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 the MTG from the West. Mary Tyler Green from the West. She lost. They haven't called the race yet, but she's down by three, 4,000 votes. And in one of these races, you know that is probative. That's pretty much like a sinker. You're gone. So Bobart seems to be gone. Let's see if my thing came through live now, live now. Yeah, went through. Bobert seemed to have been gone, so boop, boop, it happened. All right, Tom C., uh, let's see what else we got. Eric has said, oh, my God, your judge is part of the problem, and in Harris County, it's status quo, and will be more of the same shoved down people's throats uh, with a 4-1 advantage. I told you you weren't winning anything, uh, Eric. I told you they could spend the millions of dollars. They could give away the money. The grassroots held. The grassroots held. I, I brought to you guys what, what uh, we had our people in, in, in Kingwood and Humble doing with, uh, with the great leadership of John Cotter and others, with the great leadership of Tops, with the great leadership of, of people informing people with the truth like, um, like, like Gina, uh, Gina Carolyn that, that, that I had on my show. So, I mean, uh, we did it. It's grassroots. And all those fat cats who wanted to lay money, if you think they were giving uh, money to her, they weren't giving money to Alexandra to solve a crime problem. They were giving money to Alexandra because they are developers that want to develop in areas that Alexandra will say no because of flood mitigation. Again, I am happy. Eric, Egberto Hidalgo has three under indictment and she isn't out of the woods yet with the investigation. Let Kim Og try. You know, Kim Og, let Kim Og try to, to indict her. All Kim Og will do is guarantee that she won't be reelected two years from now. The grassroots is not going to let up on this one. The grassroots will not let up on allowing false charges to be made against, K against Lina Hidalgo and all the others. It won't happen. You can try, but you almost guarantee that you will not be reelected. The grassroots in, in Harris County is powerful. All right. Uh, Lee Grant says, J.D. Vance victory is huge. Um, no, J.D., uh, that was going to be a very hard state to win, but we picked up a lot of, a lot of house seats. But again, due to the, the great grassroots effort done by Tim, and I'm not even a Tim fanatic, right? I'm not a Tim Ryan fanatic, but Tim fits uh, what he was trying to do. Money was just too big for such a big state. So that, that same thing that happened to Beto. If Beto had more money, 
he had a lot, but he, I mean, he needed a ton of money to go up against um, uh, Abbott. Couldn't do it. All right, Michael Egberto, Democrats seem to need a majority plus two in order to get anything done. Having two years of time wasting partisanship would be really bad for our nation. I agree. But I mean, there's, there are just certain things baked in. Lee Grant, remember that you said a year from now, see what issues, support, and votes he makes that actually make an impact on your life. Eric Hayes says, whoa, still worried about bad orange man while most can't afford things. Well, because of bad orange man. Yeah, that's why we cared about him. All right, let's see what else we got here. Deborah Moyer says, seems like Michigan was tired of red. Man, Mich- I mean, I think Michigan is a prototype. And I, what I want them to do is I want uh, Dem- Dem- Demer, what's her name, the, the name of your governor? She needs to be given a lot of credit, the governor of, um, of Michigan. Deborah Moyer says, here in PA, no OZ and no Maisano, TG. Exactly right. All right, TG is right. De- uh, TG, TG, TG. Okay. Oh, green. All right, let's see what else we got here. Eric Hayes, bond reform should come down to two questions between release or remand. Are there danger to their community? And, and that's what's being done right now. Some will always slip through the chain, just like how they slip through the Republicans' chain. You know, it's, it's just, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. Egberto, your prognosis is not yours. She, most lo- she almost lost and maybe. If there weren't precincts problems in, in most of the red areas, could have been different. No, she didn't mostly, no, she didn't almost lose. She won. She got more than 50% of the votes. She won. She's the incumbent. She should have won. And again, and again, the lies is what made it this close. Not her job. The lies made it close. All right. Egberto, I don't know, want to prematurely call any races that haven't been officially called. Give them a couple of days. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but, you know, I mean, Bobir, you, you, you got you to gotta excuse me for Bobir, man. You, you, Bobert or whatever her name is. All right, Billy James, if you know, nope, it's the bond men. We aren't supposed to bond anymore per Egberto. You got that right, baby. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Paul Fleming says 88% of white evangelicals voted for Walker instead of a man who's devoted his adult life to Christ. Let that sink in. That just proves who they are. It proves who they are, Paul Fleming. Uh, let's see what else we got. Michael Brunner says, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you, Whitmer, 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 Gretchen Whitmer. I love her. Uh, it's, it's, no, she's not the Canadian one. All right. Every case, 4-1 Harris County control equals Lake Houston flooding in the future. No, it means they'll have to do sensible things so that they don't flood down below Lake Houston where all the poor people live. Oh, TG, thank God. All right, got you. Paul Fleming says Trump's woes to exposure everything he knows about Ron DeSantis. Ah, oh, that should be interesting. Uh, He's probably going to go scorch earth. Michael Rennes says, Paul Fleming Sr., 88% of white evangelicals vote. I, I read that one already. Eric says, Egberto, you want, letter, you want Fetterman policy, let out all criminals and legalize all drugs? If you think that is his policies, it means that you are a, it means that you can be duped very easily because it means that you followed the right wing spin that makes absolutely no sense, none whatsoever. Paul Fleming says it is. It wasn't for the voters under thirty; it would have been a red wave. And I think that is one of the stories that I'm covering today. Thank you so kindly, our Gen Zs. You guys, I love you. I love you, Gen Zs. But I always knew your time was coming. Anyway, let's go for that first video. Matthew Dowd hit the nail on the head, and I gotta send him a little note in a little bit. Check this out. And then we'll take it on the other side. My good friend, Matthew Dowd, nailed it again. And you know what is so amazing with him nailing it? It's actually exactly what is happening now. I want to, you to listen to what he said just before uh, the polls close. And then we'll take it on the other side. 
I mean, I I think that that we're going to know early on on election night uh, as votes start coming in, which I counsel. I've always counseled every candidate, as you know, Nicole and operatives is don't pay attention to much or the rumors you hear on Election Day, whether it's snowing in Minnesota or raining in Miami (laughs) or whether or not there are people lined up at the polls in one place or not is all of that. It doesn't matter until we actually start receiving votes start in. To me, it, it, I'm, I'm looking at where are we on the early part of the night because the Republicans and many of the forecasters, many of the forecasters and modelers have predicted a red wave. And we're going to know that very quickly, specifically to one state. And we talked about it and I went and talked to voters there, which is New Hampshire. New Hampshire will close relatively early. It has a key sta- uh, U.S. Senate race with Maggie Hassan and it has two key uh congressional races that if there is a red wave you'll see it there if that red wave doesn't start forming there it means we're going to be in for a very mixed and different night than most of the modelers had thought that's what i think is going to happen i think we're going to be in a mixed night in the course of this i have a theory (laughs) as you know i have many theories but i have a theory (laughs) that what happened this year is the op is the same thing that happened in 2016 but the opposite and in 2016 all the modelers and forecasters overestimated Democrat support and underestimated Republican support. I think the reverse has happened today, which they've underestimated Democratic support and overestimated Republican support. Already today, already today, even in the polls, the objective ones, Democrats are already overperforming because traditionally the out party that doesn't hold the presidency loses in the first midterm by an average of seven or eight points. It's happened in every single midterm starting in 1982, with the exception of Bush's when he had astronomical approval ratings in 2002. Democrats aren't going to lose this race by seven or eight points in the course of this. That's the norm. So they're already overperforming. And so I'm very interested in the early returns and what it gives us a sign of, because what I think it's going to give us a sign of is all those Republican polls that flooded the zone in the last week were wrong and we're way overestimating Republican support. And then we're in for not only a long night, we're probably in for a long week. Matthew, you hit the nail on the head. And by the way, and not to pat myself on the back, but my politics and right folks would tell you that I've been saying the same thing as well. This stuff, these polls, it was, it's not that the polls are wrong. It's that how the polls are doing and also forgetting that a poll is not static and that there is, in fact, acceleration when folks start to see, oh, my God, we may actually lose everything. Man, that was a good call right on the money. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We, we, the Senate is still up for grabs. But I well, it's not up for grabs. All the votes are in already. It's about counting the votes and making sure. But if you follow the directionality of what occurred yesterday, it would hard it would be hard to believe that we are not going to get at least 51 in my humble opinion, all right? I think it's going to be 51. I think we're going to win Nevada, I think we're going to win Arizona, I think we're going to win uh uh Georgia. I am so sad that we came just short of winning Wisconsin because Mandela Barnes ran a hell of a campaign and the fact that they had to go racial on him, both with the tonality and the way they, they just thought darkening his skin while we're putting all the ads out and saying he is going to increase criminality. You know how they first associate a hue with criminality and then, then Mandela, it was hard for some people to get over their, their, their most inner prejudices. And I think that was the margin of defeat. I think that was the margin of defeat. Peggy Lopez is in the house. Peggy worked the polls all day. She gave us a call at KPFT earlier today. Love hearing your voice, Peggy. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, Peggy, do me a favor. I, I need a big, big favor, Peggy. I don't, I, I, I was looking for that, that email. Could you send me an email at info at politics done right.com info at politics done right.com. I want to I want to get that stuff we spoke about. So if you send it to me, then I'll, I'll reply to that. I would appreciate that. All right, folks, thumbs up, please, on 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 uh, YouTube and likes on Facebook. That helps our helps the algorithm with us, you know, which is what we're looking for. Anyhow, I mentioned earlier, or not I, but one of you mentioned earlier, and I, I picked up on it. It's it's actually a part of the show today, and this is a story. 
Young people saved elections for Democrats, says progressives. Don't underestimate the power of a pissed off generation, said Next Gen America. You know, Next Gen, uh, I had, remember, Next Gen America, I had one of the um, the founders. Let me, I can't remember her name right now, uh, but I'm looking it up as we speak. <clears throat> but I had Next Gen America on our show. Uh, when was it? I think it was about, para ver, para ver, para ver. Um, a uh, few few ago, but her name is Delilah Agno Otokili. Uh, if you remember, I had her on the show a few times. And there was one other person that is in this group. I'm trying to find the other lady that I had in here that was on our program. But uh, Delilah Ago, Ago Otogile. I can never get her name right. And, you know, one of these days she's going to slap me around for getting it wrong. All right. Anyhow, so she's been on our show before. But they, that's one who was reporting in this program that says, while control of Congress remained unclear as of Wednesday afternoon, young voters who turned out for Democrats on Tuesday played a key role in blocking a red wave that had been anticipated based on previous midterm elections and widely predicted by political pollsters and pundits. Republic, you know, I, it got, it, I really got upset at 538, the guy from 538, one of their pollsters. And the reason I got upset is he came on, on just before the election and just talked about, well, there's gravity and this, just, this is just what's going to happen. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm watching him being interviewed on MSNBC like, no, it's not. I, you know, you, and the funny, to show you how these guys just continue to just push a narrative without any forethought. And to show you how so many of these purported journalists don't use scientific methods, right? Let me explain. Uh, we had early votes. Uh, pa past experience have shown that early vote normally uh, goes towards Democrats. That's, that's sort of a rule of thumb. But not only that, that an increased amount of voters, if you get a larger base, you actually get more Democrats and progressives as well. And what did we see in the early vote? We had a lot of early votes and we had a record early vote. And these guys want to stick with their model. We are right. Elitist SOBs. We are right. So they stick with their model about, oh, it's going to be a route. Not taking into account that there was a 5 million vote jump ahead for Democrats in that in, in, in the early vote. So they just disregard it and stick with your model. And that's when you see Matthew Dowd went out quiet and said, look, the model is wrong. I bet it's going to be the same overperformance that we gave for Democrats is the overperformance that you're going to give for Republicans in these votes. <clears throat> marvelous, marvelous. Anyway, Republicans may still secure majorities in the U.S. House and Senate, enabling them to impede President Joe Biden's agenda for the next two years. But Democrats have won some major congressional and gubernatorial races, and voters backed progressive ballot measures on abortion, forced prison labor, marijuana, Medicaid expansion, and minimum wage. As ballot counting continued Wednesday, campaigners, candidates, and political commentators remarked on the significance of young voters, including members of Generation Z, ages 18 through 25, millennials, 26 through 40, who also helped Biden decisively defeat President Donald Trump in 2020. U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who was re-elected, said that the role of young people in this election cannot be underestimated. Young people have said the election proclaimed uh, Varshini Prakash, uh, Prakash, executive director of the youth-led Sunrise Movement, two elections in a row, young people proved that Gen Z is a vital voting block that can and will be the bedrock of the Democratic Party. According to the climate leader, that's why our leaders must invest in us from running candidates who fight for the issues that matter most to our generation, to deliver in policy as the federal uh, level that make our lives better, to put in money into critical youth organizing efforts. And you can read the rest. It's a, it's a fairly long article. But the idea is, the idea is, young people, muchísimas gracias. Okay, let me get back to you guys. We have 
Uh, Eric K says it used to be Biden model. Let's know. Let's see. Deborah, I agree that young people saved their thing. Let's go to the next one. Pence said he will have a town hall on CNN. LOL. Cue the fly. I wonder why. uh, Paul says if Republicans take the House, they will try to raise the retirement age to 70. We still have the veto pen. But EGMCP says Michael Rudnan can't copy. Oh, that's another one. Hi, all. Very slow moving today after running, working the polls yesterday. Saw the good news from Egberto earlier. Thank you, Egberto, for being able to stay with the daily ups and downs politically. It was crazy last night, man, because I had to drive into town. And after driving into town, did the show for a couple hours, drove back. But while driving back, I had the phone. I have YouTube TV, right? So I had the phone up there watching MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News. And it was Fox News last night was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious trying, seeing them trying to will, will a victory. They tried so hard to will a victory. Sorry, Fox. Uh, I mean, we have to hope for the best for Americans, not the best for Fox News. All right. Paul Fleming says 14 of Trump's handpicked candidates have lost. AVQ says over half of Trump's endorsed candidates have lost. Yes. And Egberto, do you think uh, mail is in what was the advantage in this election? Do you think mail? No, 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 no. I mean, mailing wasn't the advantage. I mean, it makes life easier for a lot of people who like to mail their votes in instead of formula line. It's in the comfort of your home. You can do a lot of analysis if you haven't done so before. All right, let's see what else we got here. Deborah Moyer says, in my experience, many people of color are way nicer and kinder than white people. I did my thumb. Oh, what does that mean? Let's see. Michael Rudnan says, I'm about to say something harsh. Young people overwhelmingly prefer Democrats while Republicans are Asian. (laughs) Stop it. I'm I'm an elderly now. Be, Be nice. I'm elderly. Don't forget now. Lee Grant says, Paul Fleming Sr., that's fear-mongering. Come on, man. What did he say that was fear-mongering? About Social Security? Uh, Was it about, if it's about Social Security, that's not fear-mongering, that's the truth. That is actually the truth. Eric Hayes says, is there anything to learn from Florida on this election and and what uh, could spread from the 2024? I don't, look. What I would learn from Florida is you need to invest. Let me tell you what happens. The Latino community went strong for DeSantis. But let me give you a story. Uh, If you listen to Latino radio, Spanish radio, the amount of lies that you hear, the, the, the Republicans invest in a lot of ads on Latin radio, and they know what buttons to push, you know? And there's no counter from Democrats. Like I said... Democrats pay a lot of money to elitist organizations who claim to do polls, who claim to know the population, but they don't know a damn thing. You have to have a paradigm shift. Democrats need to have their pollsters, yes, but they need to have their people on the ground. That's where their money needs to be spent. They don't do it enough. All right. Okay, what else we got here? What else we got here? Lee Grant says, uh, maybe Fetterman can help in Philly, a blue city uh, hellhole. Like Oklahoma City and Tulsa, maybe? Okay, I think that's what you mean. If women took up arms to defend their reproductive rights, Republicans would have increased the age to which you own a weapon to 21. I agree. Doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, As Genghis Khan told me, no, wait, wait, come on, man. You know this is far from uh, over. It's, it'll take weeks, maybe months. See how this plays out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think we are in a good shape. As Genghis Khan told me in the third period algebra where he sat in the seat behind me and passed me a note saying, let's see how it plays out. Okay, all right. Absentee voting an advantage? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. All right, let's see. U.S. voter turnout lags behind most other democracies. We don't have automatic voter registration, mail-in voting, and early voting aren't widely adopted. And we don't have 
election day as a holiday, true? Absentee voting from the Bridge MCP says absentee voting uh, going on like 50 years with military, then with disabled, then with pandemic. It's not new. Paul Fleming says, if you're afraid that books might change someone's thinking, then you are not afraid of books. You're afraid of thinking. I like that. Tax planning is part of planning is retiring at 70. There is a huge advantage for Social Security reason. Yeah. You know what's the advantage? That they don't want to raise the minimum, uh, the, 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 the maximum requirement on Social Security. We need to allow everybody's wages, all of it, to be taxable by Social Security. You don't get the scam, though. You don't get the scam. All right. Let's go ahead and get my last video of the day. Let's go ahead and get busy. You know things are bad when Fox News comes out against the Republican Party. And they had a, a commentator, well-known commentator, Mark Thiessen, on. And he had a hell of an indictment on the Republican Party. I mean, I want you to listen to it in his own words because it is important to see the dejection. I've been looking over Twitter and a lot of other places where conservatives are up in arms. Now they're they're turning against their own party. How could this really happen? Check out what this guy has to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. Think about this. We have the worst inflation in four decades the worst collapse in real wages in 40 years, the worst crime wave since the 1990s, the worst border crisis in U.S. history. We have Joe Biden, who is the least popular president since Harry Truman, since presidential polling happened, and there wasn't a red wave. That is a searing indictment of the Republican Party. That is a searing indictment of the message that we have been sending to the voters. They looked at all of that and said, and looked at the Republican alternative and said, no, thanks. That is, that is a the Republican Party needs to do a really deep introspection look in the mirror right now because this is this is an absolute disaster for the Republican Party and we need to turn back. We need to start. We need to look at who won today: Ron DeSantis, DeWine, uh, the, these these governors, Kemp. Kemp, Abbott, Abbott. You know, look at these governors. This is the path mm -hmm. to the future. At electing these these these. And, you know, these these radical candidates who who ran far behind them has put the Republican Party in a terrible position and voters have left and indi have, have indicted the Republican Party. Now, listen, um, they don't get it. I mean, I understand this guy's dejected. This guy feels like, yes, Americans deject re rejected the party. But there's one other thing that he he himself is yet to notice. He puts his, his hopes in DeSantis. He puts his hope in uh, uh, the Texas governor Abbott and a few others, uh, Republican governors or, or senators that won. The thing about it is if they become the norm, if, if I mean, Abbott only wins in Texas. DeSantis only wins in Florida. All these Republicans are in specialized cases. So I would like to tell this young man, bring it on. Let's have Abbott run. Let's have DeSantis run. And let's have a lot of mini DeSantis and a lot of mini Abbott's run. Because the truth is, the Democratic Party never challenged these guys as they should. As I said on KPFT last night during our coverage of, of the, uh, the election, imagine, imagine, based on what Americans say that they want, the policies that they want, if we were ever going to make hard-hitting ads and hard-hitting engagements with people to let them know what we are going to do and why these other guys are the ones stopping it. Why these guys are the ones killing your mother. Why are these guys the ones starving your children? Why are these guys the ones taking away your wealth? Why are these guys the ones passing all the policies that allows corporations to rip you off and you put it in bread and butter notions that people can feel? So yes, run a lot of mini DeSantis. Run a lot of little Abbott's. Because you know what? I think Democrats are starting, well, I don't know about Democrats, progressives are starting to say, you know what, to hell with what the elitists on the top are trying to tell us down. Listen to Brother Carville, even though Carville to some extent is a neoliberal, but listen to Carville when he says, don't have the Ford Foundation telling you how to fight. Because a lot of times they have ulterior motives. They don't want Democrats to win too much. They want them in the lead because they're more humane. 
but they don't want them really in full power because then we get a society that protects everybody. And you have to realize now, our economic system is not designed that way. Our economic system is designed to move everything up to the few and have the few be in command, a patriarchal society. But you know what, folks? Just like the Powell Manifesto came out when people were getting too smart, these guys are worried that people will get smart again. And all the structures created by the Powell Manifesto, the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, and all these things that misinform you to have you vote against your interests, it's coming apart. That's their fear. Folks, bring on DeSantis. Bring on Abbott. Let's see how far the party gets. We Absolutely. How far does the party get? Okay, we got uh, Mike Cisak. Welcome to the Welcome to the forum. I find it rather interesting that European countries have banned absentee mail-in voting, but Democrats are all in on it. Speaks volumes as to, as to their reason, since Europeans said it is the main cause of fraud. Now you want to take use a European message. And find, uh, find us where you see that. Because, I mean, there have been very many states, including red states, that have voted by mail for quite some time. All right. Peggy Lopez says, progressives hanging with the Democrats is the way to grow the left in America. True. The election shows the power of the left when it stays with Democrats. Right wing appears to be leaving Trump. They will leave Trump eventually. Uh, Deborah Moyer says, I disagree with his facts. Peggy Lopez says, uh, Bridge MCB, it was great yesterday to tell the voters, thank you for voting. Tell your family, thank you for their service from me. Exactly. That's so nice of you. All right. Bridge MCP says, I will. Uh, uh, many European countries leave Ban leave banned mail in voting. Bridge MCP, thank you for your super chat. You did the show yesterday, then last night, then today, and now this show. Here is the donation I tried to do, KPFT. Thank you, thank you. Well, Bridge, thank you for supporting what we're doing here. And anybody who wants to match Bridge MCP, just click that, just click that super chat button. Or just join our PDR posse. This is really something that we have to do. I, I, I tell folks all the time, we are going to make sure and inform, inform, and inform. As we get more informed people, guess what happens? We all get smarter. All of us, including those who are informing appropriately. Thank you, Bridge. Love you, girl. Uh, many Europe, European countries have banned uh, email, mail in voting because of massive fraud, but it's coming back. Here you go. Egberto, if Democrats, from Michael Rodnan, Egberto, if Democrats get a supermajority in Congress while we have a Democratic president, what would we get? Well, we know what we would get. Not, let, well, let, let me finish reading your statement. I'd hope for the Green New Deal, but we'll barely get Bill Back Better. I'd hope for living wages, but we'll barely get $15 per hour minimum wages. I hope for single-payer universal health care, but we'll ba barely get a not public option. I see we're on the same wavelength. That is true if we just elect your generic Democrat. I am talking about us engaging people so that we go to primaries. Like I said yesterday on the KPFT show last night, we have to start encouraging people to go to primaries and elect the most progressive persons that you can find in the primaries. All right. Uh, flawed them party tethered to a, Vic, a Vichy leadership and GOP. There's an ap 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 apocalyptic death cult. Uh, have in common that they all blame us regular working folk. That's true. You will continue the banana republic, is what he says. Our E2247 says also, we lost our bodily autonomy, contended with a relentless pandemic, saw ever more clearly the complicity of our institutions as U.S. became first country in history uh, to memory whole coup and let a career criminal coup plotter run for office again, like a Cosa Nostra Grover Cleveland. I love that. Cosa Nostra, Grover Cleveland. You're good. That's a good one. Eric Hayes doesn't know what a banana republic is. True. All right. All right, folks. Uh, what time is it? I better do my ask now. So I'll do the ask and then I'll come back. Politics done right depends on you to keep doing what we do. What do we do? We make sure to keep, number one, the internet seeded with blogs and information to counter the right and to present what 
progressives represent for the be- benefit of us all to everybody so that it's not misread, misled by any other entity. We make sure and populate that internet with blogs, with videos, with all these other things to make sure that we are informed and to counter everything that you normally hear that, that are lying at the right. We also make sure to create articles in, in magazines, articles in newspapers all around the country to ensure, again, that our message gets out there. Last but not least, we also write books. As you see it, Class Warfare, the only re- resort to right-wing doom, How to Make America Utopia, are two of the many books that I've written on these issues. So please support us in one of many ways. Numero uno, you can support us at PayPal, either one time or monthly. Go to politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. You can support us on Patreon. That is politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. You can support us by becoming a part of our YouTube channel. Go into politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. Or you can support us in many other forms that you can find at politicsdoneright.com slash support. Be sure to visit our store, politicsdoneright.com slash store, and get our books at politicsdoneright.com slash books. Politics Done Right. All right, folks. So that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Okay, let's see. Eric Hayes says, uh, more layoffs, Facebook, 11,000 people, and sales force 2.23K. Yep, the bubble is busting. They went on a hiring spree, which is a good thing for... If, if you really need the people, but right now, like I like remember, a lot of those jobs are needed, right? But it's a bottom line first. Capitalism for you. Bottom line first. Humanity doesn't matter. Humanity doesn't matter. All right. Let's see what else we're up to. Let's see. We're at 50. We got 10 minutes. Okay, folks. The rest of the show is on you. I had those two videos that I prepared. I have another long video, but it's too late to play it today. Uh, so what questions do you have? Ask Egberto anything live. Come on, ask Egberto anything or give me whatever statements you want to provide me right now. I will wait and wait for your commentary so that I can appropriately answer your questions or engage you with whatever you might want to talk about right now. It's your show, so let it rip. And I will wait for it to rip. I think there's probably a 10 to 15 second delay, but that's okay. Egberto, but said companies, Facebook and others are lefties. And why are the media bashing them? Facebook is not a lefty. Facebook worked with Donald Trump to throw the, well, not to throw the election, but he, he, they had, they worked very closely with Daniel Trump. And that's why Daniel Trump's media was so good. He could reach any demographic he wanted so that he could offend one demographic while talking to another demographic. Both of them support him, so he isolated his messages. And I mean, he just just had a boss operation, that Donald Trump I'm talking about. All right. Anybody else have any questions, anything they want to state as well? I'm here. I'm getting very sleepy, actually, uh, because I stayed up watching that stuff, then went to bed, then had to get up and go to the KPFT studio after coming back from the KPFT studio late last night. But anyhow. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Eric says, Facebook spent $500 million to get Biden in office. Uh, could you go ahead and show me the corroborating information for that? I would love to see that. Send me the corroborating information that proves that point that you just said, Eric Hayes, and then I'll take it seriously. Michael Ronis, Eric Hayes, understand uh, that leftists aim, aim to uh, overturn c- to capitalism. Social media companies are ex- capitalist entities. What? What you said doesn't make sense. True, true, true. All right, folks, um, any more questions, statements? Because my eyes are closed and I'm getting sleepy, I'm going to take a five-minute siesta. I'm going to lay back in my chair for a bit and I'm going to take a five-minute siesta. Actually, probably a 15-minute siesta. Tú sabes que nosotros los latinos son la clase de cosas que hacemos siempre, ¿no? Have a good night, Egberto. Stopping out a few minutes early. You have a great day, Michael Rudnan, and uh, stay positive. We're going to pull this stuff out, okay? I want everybody to stay positive. I'm going to check out about three, four minutes early today. Like I said, I, I genuinely, uh, um, you know, so 
I'm, I'm genuinely that way. Brit says, go nap the time at Egberto. Thank you. Thank you, my dear, beautiful lady. Thank you so kindly. So, folks, don't forget, support the show. Please do. Uh, go to politicsunright.com slash support for all the different ways in which you can support the show. And if you haven't read my new book, it's done in chapters at a time, and I think I'm on chapter 10. Please check it out. It is politicsunright.com slash tribulations. Politicsunright.com slash tribulations. And what the title of that book is? The title of the book is pretty cool. It is uh, Tribulations of an Afro-Latino Caribbean Man. Racism didn't stop my smile, hope, or journey forward. I mean, check it out. I have some stories that, that so much has happened to me. I have some stories that would shock you to death. Eric A says, Mark Zuckerberg spent 419 on nonprofits ahead of 2020 and got out the Democratic vote. Wow. I think you better reread that. Show me the corroborating information. Don't show me stuff like that. Show me the corroborating information, like the schedule that they have to fill out, right? But anyhow, I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. Uh, what does Eric mean by why not return the precinct-based voting model for accountability? You see, anytime I'm about to leave, somebody asks a very important question. In Texas, the way you voted in precinct is everybody have their own precinct and they voted within their precinct. Sometimes three and four precincts would get together for in one location. But generally speaking, you have one location per precinct. A precinct is a predetermined number of voters in a particular area. And uh, that's how it normally works. Now, when Lena Hidalgo came, and before Lena Hidalgo, uh, my friend, uh, what's her name is... Um, uh, uh, whew. Uh, uh, Diane Trotman, who was our county clerk, she instituted a countywide uh, conglomerate. In, in other words, everything worked together. You didn't, if you work on one side of town, you didn't have to rush home to go to your precinct to vote. You could vote in any part of Harris County. That's what they did, and it works impeccably. Every now and then you get breakdowns, but that's just a part of technology. That's what it's all about. Anyway, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.